Oh, sorry, give me a second. I'm just looking at some of the worst, most obscene material ever posted on the internet. First published in 1928, Lady Chatterley's Lover was banned in the U.S. until 1959 due to its sexual content. Now it's considered one of D.H. Lawrence's great works. But if it was obscene until 50 years ago and is now a masterpiece, it makes you wonder about what works we consider obscene today but will be revered come 2060. Every, anything that's, that, that, that can develop a constituency for people to want other people to behave in that way is now open in this society where the majority can impose its uh, standards and behavior patterns upon a minority. And that's a very bad precedent to set. That's John Stoliano. Stoliano doesn't do literature. He makes porn videos. And he's being prosecuted by the United States federal government on multiple counts of obscenity for producing and distributing the fetish films Milk Nymphos and Storm Squirters 2 target practice, as well as a trailer for another porn collection. If convicted on all counts and given maximum sentences, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Government agents bought the films on the adults-only website for Staliano's company, Evil Angel Productions, and had them shipped to that hotbed of moral rectitude, Washington, D.C. In the interest of full disclosure, let me add that Staliano is a donor to Reason Foundation, the nonprofit that publishes Reason TV. Federal prosecutions for obscenity are rare. But Staliano's case follows recent actions against other pornographers, such as Max Hardcore, who was found guilty of selling obscene materials in 2008, and Lizzie Borden and Rob Black of Extreme Associates, who pled guilty in 2009 after six years of court battles. Talking about pornography and obscenity makes a lot of people uncomfortable. But it's precisely this sort of boundary-stretching expression that often ends up defining where our free speech rights are most imperiled. And let's be clear. We're not talking about snuff films or child pornography, which are by definition the evidence of criminal acts. I didn't know I was breaking the law. <laughs> you know, the first thing is, you know, we're, we're a government of laws and not men. Right. If, you don't, if you don't have a law that's written that says that, okay, if you do this, you will go to jail, then, then that's a good law. If you have a law that says, well, you know, we might say that this is obscene or we might say that's obscene, but we don't really know in advance, we're just going to maybe decide to prosecute you. That's the first number one bad thing about this situation, is that I didn't know I was breaking the law. Obscenity is not covered by the First Amendment. Since 1973, a work is considered obscene if, taken as a whole, it appeals mostly to the prurient interest of an average person applying contemporary community standards and if it's deemed to depict sexual or excretory functions in a patently offensive way that has no serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. That's never a clear call. The exact same film or novel or song that might be castigated as obscene in one part of the country could be praised as great art in another. Pornography and obscenity are notoriously subjective, and all the more so when legal definitions rely on the term community standards. Especially in the age of the internet, what does community standard even mean? Staliano is based in California and is being prosecuted in D.C. for videos bought in cyberspace. So what community standard should be used? This much is certain. Staliano wasn't pushing these films on anybody who didn't want them. Some people don't like porno, and it should not be in their faces. I've always been very uncomfortable with with, with some people who make porno movies that want to say, oh, this is free speech, you know, and I'm out there and I'm just talking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. That's not me. You know, I make my porno movies right. for the people that love porno. They're my fans. They're the people I make it for. Mm -hmm. For some other people that want to have, get more publicity and stuff, that's not interesting to me. I don't want porno to be in the face of people that don't want to see it. In an era of seemingly limitless free expression online, it's easy to ignore the prosecution of pornographers. Yet that would be a mistake. Like me, you may have never purchased a porn DVD in your life, but Staliano makes a strong argument that his case has far broader implications. The reason why I think this case is important is because it, it's, it's another area where the government thinks they should be able to run our lives. And this is certainly an important area where it's art that we consume, it's recreation that we consume, and it's the principle that the government can come in and say, behave this way. And uh, they could easily extend that from looking at porn to consuming fast foods to smoking cigarettes. Oh, they already did that. Uh, to all sorts of things. John Staliano is effectively facing the rest of his life in prison 
for selling movies made by and for consenting adults. His case is pending, and Staliano has vowed to fight his case all the way to the Supreme Court if need be. Will Storm Squirters 2 be considered a cinematic masterpiece in 50 years? Maybe not, but here's hoping that the guidelines governing free expression will have disappeared completely, or at least evolved to a point where nobody's livelihood or freedom depends on the random opinions of 12 strangers called to serve on a jury. And now, if you'll excuse me, I want to get back to that brilliant bit of prose found on the internet that only a generation ago was considered so horrifying that it couldn't legally be sold in these United States. Lady Chatterley's Lover. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie. But then she soon learned to hold him, to keep him there inside her when his crisis was over. And there he was generous and curiously potent. He stayed firm inside. Est-ce pour lui, est-ce pour toi? Si c'est pour toi que je serai petite, il faut pourtant que je te dise que tu es soi.